What's up guys, it's Francis the Instructor and I'm back with another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about hazard perception. Hazard perception links into a lot of the stuff that you're gonna be doing on your driving lessons to do with anticipation and planning ahead. Hazard perception wasn't always on the driving test, but it's so good that it was added. It's such an important skill in being able to drive safely when you can spot things happening on the road before they become a problem to you. The reason that we train for hazard perception is so that you have a better understanding of how to spot hazards and problems on the road before they become something that you can't deal with. The earlier you spot a hazard, the earlier you spot a problem, the easier it's gonna to be to deal with it. So that you can work through the problem before it becomes something that you should have reacted to. I do in-car hazard perception with all my students. I usually call it anticipation and planning ahead, helping people to plan further ahead down the road, helping people to anticipate problems before they become something that you can't deal with. Let's say you're about to overtake a bus who's parked at a bus stop. If you only think about overtaking that bus when you're at the bus or just behind it, it's gonna be really hard to plan mirrors signal is anything else overtaking me what's my position on the road what's my speed is anything on coming and facing me if i'm deciding to overtake that bus 50 meters back i'm going to be able to plan what's in my mirrors is there anything overtaking me what else do i need to look out for is it a safe maneuver or should i hang back really important to anticipate and plan ahead hazard perception gets you used to that skill before you even get in the car. On the theory test, you're gonna be presented with 12 clips. It's gonna be of a car driving down the road as though you're driving it. And the idea is that you click the mouse when you spot a hazard, which is something that you have to react to. The earlier you spot the hazard, the more points you get. The more points you get, the more likely you are to pass. There's a threshold, it's not super high, but you need to be able to recognize and spot hazards as early as possible. The scoring system goes from five to zero. If you spot the hazard as soon as the clip wants you to spot it, you get five and then it works down from four, three, two, and one, down to zero points if you miss it. If you click too early, you'll get zero. If you click too late, you'll get zero and score no points for that clip. On one of the clips, you'll see two hazards just to keep you awake. If you spot the hazard and you're like, yeah, that was definitely the hazard, I've got it, I've nailed it. Five points, don't go to sleep. Keep watching the clip because this could be the one with two hazards in it. The computer can detect if you're clicking too much or rhythmically. So you really can't cheat the hazard perception test. You have to be good at spotting hazards and you have to understand how the system works and what they want you to click for. So the way I break it down is there's three stages of hazard. A potential hazard, a developing hazard, and an actual hazard. A potential hazard is anything that's got the possibility to turn into a hazard. So anything really on the road. A parked car is a potential hazard. If the car door opens, it's something you've got to react to. You've got to swerve around it. You might have to slow down. Any pedestrian walking down the side of the road is a potential hazard. Let's say they step out into the road in front of your car. Would you have to react to it? Of course. So it's really useful to spot things when they're at the potential hazard stage. You don't have to react to it yet, but we're just checking and seeing what's around us, what might cause us a problem, so that as soon as it does develop, then we're gonna be in a good position to react nice and quick. The earlier that you spot hazards, the less stressful it's gonna be. If you spot that car door opening when you're about to crash into it, you're gonna react badly, probably because you're gonna make a really quick panicked and rushed decision. If you spot it early, you've got a lot more time to think about what to do to deal with it and you're gonna make a much better decision on what to do about it. So the next stage, stage two, is a developing hazard. That potential hazard has turned into a developing hazard now. Let's say the pedestrian that's walking down the road looks over their shoulder. They're checking out the road. They're thinking about crossing. You can see that they're thinking about crossing, so you can just start to reduce your speed in case they do cross. That situation is developing into an actual hazard, something that you're gonna have to deal with for real now. Then stage three, actual hazard, something that's in front of your car right now that you should be dealing with already. If that pedestrian's already in in front of your car they've stepped out into the road and you're not dealing with it already that's a bit too late the way i explain it is you should be clicking on your hazard perception test at the developing hazard state when it's developing into something that you should be reacting to if you're clicking it when it's an actual hazard that's too late you're going to hit that person if you're already traveling at 30 miles an hour and not doing something about it if you're reacting at the potential hazard stage you're literally breaking for anything on the road and that's not effective so what i would recommend is clicking at stage two when it's a developing hazard developing into something that you've got to react to if you click at stage three when it's an actual hazard in front of you that you should be reacting to it's way too late let's say you're doing 30 miles an hour down the road there's a pedestrian in front of you if you're not already reacting that's going to be game over for that pedestrian mm, probably shouldn't say that so now we've explained what a hazard is how to recognize a hazard and the different stages of hazards one two and three let's drive around and i'll try and talk you through some hazards yeah. 
So as we're driving down the road here, I can see lots of potential hazards. There's pedestrians on my left and right. Any of them could decide to step out into the road. And if they do, I'm gonna be absolutely ready to slow down for them before they get in front of my car. I'm overtaking some parked vehicles here. Pedestrians could be behind them, which I can't see. What I like to tell my students is to use the OUT routine, over, under, and through. It's an acronym, O-U-T. Look over the car, look under the car, and look through the car that you can see what's behind it or you can try and give yourself the best view of what might be behind the car. Look how many pedestrians we've got on the left. Any one of those at any moment might step off the pavement. If I'm only thinking about it when they step off the pavement, that's gonna be way too late to react to it. See this guy here, just looked over his shoulder and he stepped off the pavement. I was well ready to react there by braking. Nice and early, sick example. I was, and I was talking about pedestrians. Okay, so I can see up ahead of me, there's someone getting into a car. What can I expect that car to do next once someone's just got into it? It might drive off. This guy's being a little bit slow to get into his car, but anything else could happen. Someone could walk around from the passenger side. A long line of parked cars here. Let's think about the hazards that this could present me. I know these are potential hazards. They could develop into a hazard if I see some brake lights turn on. That means the car might be moving off. Okay, so as I'm driving down the road now, I can see a zebra crossing ahead of me. I've got really limited visibility to the right of that zebra crossing because of the parked cars and the corner. I'm checking left, I'm checking right, and I'm slowing down because this hazard could be developing. Because I've considered the pedestrian crossing from so far back down the road, if it does develop into an actual hazard, I'm in a much better position to deal with it because I haven't left it till the last minute. If I leave it till the last minute to deal with that hazard, I'm gonna make a panic and rush decision. Panic and rush decisions are never good decisions. So guys, while you're driving, even if you're sitting in traffic, even if you're at a set of traffic lights, it's really important to stay alert and stay on top of hazard perception and planning and anticipation. When my lights turn green, I don't wanna be switched off. I need to be switched on 100% and fully. There could be a pedestrian crossing. There could be a cyclist undertaking or a motorbike overtaking me. When my lights turn green, I can't just think, go, go, go. I need to be staying alert and making sure that I'm keeping everybody, not just myself, safe on the road. Let's wait for these traffic lights to turn green and then we'll see what we can see here. We're by a busy tube station and this is a really busy high street. So I'm sure there's gonna be some fun hazards to spot here. Okay, so I'm turning into this busy road here. I'm looking all the way down the road. What can I see? Loads of pedestrians on my left, set of traffic lights ahead of me and loads of pedestrians crossing. What am I looking out for? Anything that could cause me a problem. There's so many potential hazards around here. Any of them developing? Not quite yet. So this car ahead of me, potential hazard. Developing, would I have to brake for him? I didn't have to brake for him, but I'm always considering it. Let's turn right into this road. So I'm approaching the zebra crossing. I'm staying alert. This is a potential hazard right here. If anyone approaches the zebra crossing with the intention to cross, that is developing into an actual hazard. Okay, so down this road, I can see that the van on the left has his brake lights on. That means someone's in the van. Has a perception, I'm gonna be aware of that, alert to it, and waiting for the car door to open. If it doesn't, great, didn't need to react. But if it did, I would have been ready to react to it. Addison Lee car in front of me. Potential hazard, yes. Is he gonna move off? Is it developing? It's not at the moment, but it could have easily done. If it did, I would have been ready for it. Okay, as soon as I enter a road, I'm gonna be assessing the potential hazards. It's a blind corner as well, so as soon as I get around that blind corner, I'm gonna reassess for any more potential hazards. I can see a zebra crossing, there's lots around here. Are those pedestrians approaching it? Gonna use it, that was a developing hazard. This guy here, developing into something I've gotta to react to? Yes. So the actual hazard is anything that I've got to stop, slow, or swerve for. If I've gotta do either of those three things, that was an actual hazard, something that was causing me to stop, slow or swerve. Right, so guys, hazard perception is really important. It doesn't just help you with your theory test, it helps you with driving in general. It's gonna help you be a safer driver, it's gonna help you spot hazards much earlier, it's gonna help you be safe on the road and keep everyone else safe on the road as well. I'm coming up to a big junction now, I'm using my hazard perception skills to make sure that I'm safe and I'm keeping all of these pedestrians and cars safe as well. I can see a gap, I'm looking ahead, I'm planning ahead, spotting all of the hazards before they become a problem to me, and I know I'm driving safely. Remember, hazards come in three different stages. We wanna spot the potential hazards so that we've got the most amount of time to be able to deal with it. We wanna be able to recognize developing hazards so that we can take evasive action and keep pedestrians, cyclists, and other road users safe. And we need to be dealing with actual hazards in a very effective and timely manner. I'm gonna pull in here. 
Guys, I hope you found that video helpful. Hazard perception is not just for your theory test, it's for all of your driving. We've got a blog post on this on our website. Click the link in the box and you can have a look at that. If there's anything else I can help you with theory, anything else about driving, comment below. I read through all the comments and I'll be replying to anybody else that needs some more help on this. Till the next video, I'm Francis the Instructor. This is Get Licensed Driving School. See you guys soon. Yeah.